Welcome to ES310 Lesson 10. Today we're going to have a short lecture in which we are going to introduce two new concepts related to the work and energy that we looked at in Lesson 9. These concepts are power and then the efficiency. So we're looking at machines or motors in these cases and looking at their outputs in terms of power and efficiency. So let's start with power. Power, by definition, is work per time. So mathematically, that's the time derivative of the work is equal to the power. But if we remember from last time, work is equal to the dot product of the force and the distance, which you can call r or s or x or whatever direction it's in. That means that we can put the time derivative on the r and make it velocity. So while work was the dot product of force and distance, Power is the dot product of force and velocity. And notice these are bolded, so these are vectors. But power itself, just like work, is a scalar. Because a dot product gives us scalars. In terms of units, in the SI system of units, power is measured in something called a watt. A watt is a joule per second, where joule is the measure of energy, or work. And joule is a newton meter. So a watt, then, is a newton meter per second. In the U.S. customary system, you typically hear power in horsepowers. Horsepowers comes historically from the power a horse could provide, which is 550 feet pound per second. So just like we had newton meters per second, we have feet pounds per second. The common version is a horsepower, and you can easily convert between the two. Conversion between watts and horsepower is one horsepower is 746 watts. Whenever you have a machine, we talk about the efficiency of that machine. The efficiency of anything, a system, a machine, of your ability to do homework, is the ratio of the output to the input. So in the case of a machine, we're going to look at the output power to the input power. So you have to put some amount of power into the machine to make it work, and you get some amount of power out of the machine. It's also a measure of the losses in the system, because no machine can create power, and every machine has some amount of friction or losses in the machine. The efficiency is always going to be less than one, right? So the power out is always going to be less than the power in. If we're looking at a same amount of time interval, then we can also write the efficiency as the energy out over the energy in, right? because the relationship between power and energy is energy per time is power. So if the time is the same, then these give us the same relationships. So how do we go about these problems? Well, first of all, we're going to draw the forces that cause motion, just like we did when we were work, working with work. So we need a tree body diagram. If it's accelerating, we're going to need to apply F equals MA, right? Because there's a force that's causing it to accelerate. Then we determine the speed of the object, V, because we have V in our power equation, right? P is equal to F dotted with V which may mean that we need to apply kinematic equations to find V. And then we find power by multiplying the forces and the magnitudes with the component of the velocity acting in the same direction. So we're looking for parallel forces and velocities. Just like with work, we look for parallel forces and distances. And then if we have efficiency information, we can translate between the power input and the power output by using efficiency. Typically, what you're solving for in the top part of this is the power output. That's the power that the system sees and reacts to. And then the power input you can find based on efficiency. So let's apply this to an example. So we have a car, and it's going up a hill. And the hill has a slope of 7 degrees. The car, has, we're given a mass, we're given a velocity. The velocity is going to be up the hill, so that's the direction of the velocity. We have the weight pulling down, so that's mg. And in order to do this, we're ignoring the mechanical friction, we're ignoring any wind resistance. So the engine is causing the wheels to turn, there's friction between the wheels and the road, and that is what causes the car to go up, right? So there's some sort of engine force here that looks that behaves as if it were pulling the car up the hill. So that's F. We're supposed to figure out what the power developed in the engine is 
if it has an efficiency of 0.65. So let's start with the equation for power. Power is equal to force times V. All right, so we need to figure out force. We're given V, so we need to figure out force. Well, let's look at our free body diagram, right? Let's put our coordinate system at this tilt. So X is going to go up the hill. Y is perpendicular to the hill. We need one more force, so the normal force, right, since the car isn't falling into the slope. We care about the X direction. So let's write our sum of forces in the X direction. We've got all of F and some component of mg. The component of mg, here's our triangle, the narrow one here. The component of mg then is going down the slope, so it'll be negative, and it is opposite the theta, so we have sine of theta. That is equal to ma, but we're told that we have a constant speed, so a must equal zero. So this is equal to zero, so we can find f. F is equal to mass times G times sine of theta. A, a comment on this mass unit. This is a megagram. One megagram is equal to 1,000 kilograms. We're used to going to grams, so that would be 1 times 10 to the 6th grams. But in these problems where we're using G equals 9.8 meters per second squared, we need to use kilograms as our mass unit. So this F then is 2,000 times 9.81 times sine of 7, which when you plug into your calculator gives you 2,391 newtons, or 2.4 kilonewtons if we round it. All right, so now we have a force. We're given a velocity. We can find the power. Comment on the velocity. The velocity is given in terms of kilometers per hour. In order for you to use this unit system, we need to convert that so that in one hour there are 3,600 seconds, and in one kilometer there's 1,000 meters, so our velocity is 27.78 meters per second. Plug in these numbers, we have 2.4 times 27.78 gives us a power of 66.4 and the units for this power would be kilowatts. So which power is this? The input power or the output power? Well, it's the power that's causing the car to go up the slope. So this would be the output power. So P out is 66.4. Efficiency is equal to P out over P in. Okay, so to find P in, we take P out and we divide by the efficiency, so 66.4 kilowatts divided by the efficiency of 0.65 is equal to 102 kilowatts. And that then is the power input to the engine. Let's take a look at one more example. This is an example where we need to use the kinematics in order to find inform the information we need. So it's a combined power efficiency problem with kinematics. So we have a pulley system. The, block, the motor moves the block up and down. In this case, if P is moving down, the block is going to be moving up. Right? And we're told that the po this point on the cable has a given speed and acceleration. We need to figure out what the power of the motor is at this instant. So the motor, the, the cable at the motor, is going to be moving at this same speed, right? So power is equal to force dotted with velocity. The force and the, mo and the velocity are going to be in parallel directions here. So we've got the force, whatever it may be, the force is going to be T, tension in that rope. So there's some force T, actually, would be going the other direction. We're pulling on the rope. Oops. Pulling on the rope with a tension T. Okay. So we've got T, and we've got the velocity is 12. So we need to find T. Well, 
where else do we see t? Well, this t is the same everywhere in this rope, right? So this is also t over here, in the rope here, and the rope here. So if we look at free body diagram of this box, and I'm going to cut it up here. So I'm drawing a free body diagram of that dotted rectangle I just drew. We've got 2t pulling up, right, because there's two cables with t in it. And we've got mg pulling down. So now we, from this free body diagram, our goal is to find t, right, so that we can plug it in over into the power equation. So if we're looking in the up and down direction, so the y direction, sum of forces in the y, we've got 2t going up minus mg going down is equal to mass times acceleration. What is the acceleration of this block? If the rope is accelerating, the block is also accelerating. So we know it's not zero, so we have a little bit more work to do. All right, how do we find the acceleration of the block? Well, it's attached to a point where we know the acceleration through this rope and pulley system. So we need to go back to remembering how to deal with ropes and pulleys. Let's see, we've got, we need a datum. Here's our datum. Right, we need a stationary point as our datum. We're going to call this distance, SA, I'm looking at this rope, to P. And then we'll call this distance SP. So if we write our rope equation, the length of the rope is going to be 2SA, because we go down and then we go up the same distance, plus 1SP. Take your derivatives, this is 0, 2VA, plus VBP, and 0 to AA plus AP. And we're looking for AA, right? That's what we need up here, acceleration of block A. So AA is 1 half of AP in the opposite direction of it. AP is 6, so AA is 3. So we can come back up here and solve for T is m times 3 plus m times 9.81 divided by 2. m is 50 kilograms, plug that in, and we get a tension of 320 newtons. Now we have the tension. We can plug it in over here and get the power. This is the power out of the motor, right? This is the power we're seeing in the system, so it's coming out of the motor. That's going to be 320 times 12, because that's the power seen at point P, and there's a tension, a force at point P of 320, and a speed at point 3 of 12. So then we take that product, we get 3,843, that's P out. P in is equal to P out over efficiency, just like in the last problem. So 3,843 3, divided by the efficiency of 0.8 gives us 4,804 watts, or 4.8 kilowatts.